Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're gonna to talk about bloating and low stomach acid. The mechanisms of why you might have low stomach acid and the impact it will have on gut physiology. So let's get right into it. Bloating, low stomach acid. Main causes for hypochlorhydria. That's the technical term for low stomach acid. Number one, obviously, is medications. Antacids or PPIs or proton pump inhibitors will reduce stomach acid. Technically, when you use a PPI, you should use it only for short periods of time to manage symptoms. Oftentimes, patients come in and they're on PPIs for three years, four years, 10 years, and they have low stomach acid, which can lead to malabsorption issues um, due to inability to break down fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. So PPI is a big factor in low stomach acid. H. pylori infections in the gut. H. pylori is one of the most common gut infections in the world. It decreases HCL production because the H. pylori will embed into the lining of the, of the stomach. So decrease HCL production overall. Dysautonomia. Now this is not discussed very often, but head concussions or trauma can lead to what we call the decrease in parasympathetic function. So when you have a fight or flight uh, dysfunction, it can lead to low stomach acid. So parasympathetic is the calm, relaxing, so you can digest. So if you have a decreased fun function of parasympathetic system, then your sympathetic system, which is the heightened response, will uh, be an imbalance and the heightened re response will be higher, decreasing stomach acid. Basically, when you're afraid or nervous, you're not really thinking about digesting your foods, are you, right? So you might feel like there's a rock in your stomach when, you're, when you eat, uh, when you're nervous or scared. Hypothyroid, mild traumatic brain injuries, and brain degeneration will lead to decreased vagal function. The vagus nerve is cranial nerve 10, and it goes down and innervates the GI tract. Okay? So when you impact vagal function, you will also decrease hydrochloric chloric acid production, right? So these di different um, pathologies can create low stomach acid. Gut degeneration. Oftentimes we don't talk about this, but some people will have degeneration of the enteric nervous system, much like they would have a degeneration of the brain, right? Or neurodegeneration, Alzheimer's and those types of things. You can actually have degeneration of the enteric nervous system. The enteric nervous system is about 30 feet long when you put it, you know, stretch it out. It has 200 to 600 million neurons. So it's very large, right? This nervous system is very large. And gut degeneration will impact that and decrease HCL production, right? Some people who have severe gut degeneration or severe uh, enteric nervous system degeneration may never get back the HCL function. Okay. Those patients really need to supplement and make sure they're digesting their foods. Now, the impact that low stomach acid will have in our system is varied. Okay? One, if you have low stomach acid, you'll have the inability to break down your proteins. So decrease breakdown of proteins into its individual amino acids for absorption. So if you don't break down your proteins, what can happen is you have different peptides, like strings of amino acids that get down into the GI tract and gets into the bloodstream and causes an inflammatory response. So you wanna be able to break down the proteins to its amino acids. If they're uh, combined, it can also create an inflammatory response in our system. So uh, decreased pancreatic enzyme release. HCL or the acidity will actually uh, increase pancreatic enzyme release. But if you have low stomach acid, your pancreatic enzymes will not be released efficiently. Decreased gallbladder contraction. Again, the acidity will cause the gallbladder to contract to re release bile uh, acid. 
So if you have decrease in gallbladder this, uh, release, you're going to have issues with uh, dysbiosis, uh, you're going to have uh, malabsorption issues, and so forth. Okay? Also, HCL uh, sterilizes the GI tract or the stomach. Right? So if you have low stomach acid, it has the inability to sterilize the small intestine. And that will increase the probability of getting SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Okay? So it increases the probability of that. And SIBO is one of the main causes of what we call IBS. Right? When your doctor can't figure out why you have loose stool or stomach pain and those types of things, they just call it IBS. Well, SIBO is the number one cause for IBS. The increase in methane and hydrogen gas in our, in our GI tract will cause increased bloating. So bloating is a telltale sign of SIBO, especially if the bloating gets worse throughout the day with each meal. Increased probability of GI infection. Remember, HCL sterilizes the stomach or the small intestine. HCL also kills off bacteria that gets into our stomach. So if you have low HCL, if you get some sort of pathogen, whether it's H. pylori or some sort of uh, infectious uh, uh, stool or, or fecal matter in our water system or food, the HCL can take care of it if it's really strong. But if it doesn't, you're susceptible for the infection. It alters pH also. And pH limits GI diversity. So if you have poor pH balance in our GI tract, you're going to reduce gut diversity, meaning the bacterial levels um, will be different or skewed into, in terms of bad bacteria and good bacteria. So it's going to cause uh, dysbiosis, and it's going to cause some problems down the line. And in severe cases, it goes to malabsorption syndrome, where you're just not absorbing things into our system. All right. So those are all the different reasons. Um, what you can try at home is you can use um, apple cider vinegar. You can take a teaspoon, mix it in some water, drink it maybe five minutes before your meal, and see if that is helpful in terms of breaking down your proteins and you get less of the, you know, the rock in the stomach or the reflux signs and those types of things because HCL can be beneficial for that. So, um, you want to try use apple cider vinegar, and if it works really well for you, you can use that. Or you can go to higher doses of HCL with other enzymes, which will help break down the fats, carbohydrates, and proteins, etc. All right. A lot of this information com comes from Dr. K or Dr. Karazian. I'll link his website below. Uh, he also has a lot of uh, information for the, the regular lay people who can um, do some of his programs. So I'll go ahead and link that below for you. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side. Have an awesome day.